I'm really excited about our next speaker because a couple of things that Artemi and Benny have said there about sphere of influence and sometimes we feel quite disempowered about where we sit in the hierarchy, whether or not we can get involved um, in these conversations. And Maz, our next speaker, completely disproves that. In her in her very mm -hmm. early career, she took on responsibility for DEI at the Eatford and Junior School where she worked. She completed the DEI Leaders Programme with myself and Angie, and she has absolutely flexed that muscle and built her legacy as she started her career. So Maz, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here today. Hi Anna, thank you so much for having me here today. Pleasure, and I'm excited for you to share your story and to inspire your peers to just do the work. So over to you. Brill, thank you. So I'm going to be talking about my journey of leading DEI work as an NQT or ECT now as they call it and the different things that I've been doing in my school. So I just thought I'd start by introducing myself. My name is Maz and I came into teaching in 2020. So this is my second year of teaching now and I'm teaching as an early years practitioner in a very diverse and multicultural city school in Leicester. So I became DEI lead halfway through my first year of teaching. And I think at first my excitement was sort of mixed with, um, I guess a fear of a lack of confidence and uncertainty about where to begin. But I remembered back to my second day at Humberston, the school I'm working at, where I led a CPL session to staff about the importance of representation and stories. And the feedback from that session and the, the impact was really uplifting. So I guess, although I was still finding my feet as a teacher last year, I was really grateful to be given such a big opportunity at an early stage in my career. And I guess I also knew the importance of the work that we're doing through my own lived experiences. So a little bit about my background then. I was brought up in a single parent family, raised by my white mum. And I guess from an early age, I've always, well, I always wanted to sort of minimise my cultural heritage and not draw attention to the fact that I was different. An example of this being my curly hair. And so my family all have straight blonde hair, blue eyes. And I guess the closest that I could get to fitting into that was to straighten my Afro curly, um, my curly Afro Caribbean hair. And Although my mum would constantly reassure me that my curls are unique and beautiful, it was probably only about 10 years ago that I finally learned to embrace my differences. And I guess the reason that I'm saying this is because I've seen it in my classroom now. I'm an early years practitioner, so the children that come to my classroom are four and five years old. And when I've asked them to draw self-portraits of themselves, they're using pink for their skin and blue for their eyes and blonde for their hair. And they're not truly drawing themselves. They're drawing an idealized version of what they should be or who they want to be when actually who they are is not only normal, but it's wonderful and it's beautiful. And this is just one of many examples of the importance of this work. And I guess my reason and the purpose as to why I'm doing it. So something that I've learned since doing, since becoming DEI leader at my school is that as teachers, we have the ability to impact what children believe is possible for their lives. So providing an environment that really allows for inclusion to thrive from day one of your career is so important. And something, well actually, so my thinking I think has, has changed tremendously in the past year and a half. I'd say that now I'm more aware and um, that might be from the conversations that I'm having to the way that I now plan my lessons. Inclusion is always at the forefront of my mind, which I found hasn't has not only helped me as a person, but it's also had many benefits. And I've seen the benefits that it's having on the children as well. And an example of something that I do in my classroom is using the children's home language to answer the register each morning. So every morning the children come in and they are keen to say hello in a different language. Now I've had a look at the home languages that children speak at home or languages that um, parents speak. And we use this to say hello or good morning in a different language. So we've said hello in um, Gujarati, Arabic, um, Greek, Urdu, the list is endless. And it's, it's something so simple yet so inclusive for all the children. So I think now I'm going to talk about um, the journey that I've been on and also um, 
I guess, my priorities for this year. So my focus really for this year was to educate myself more than anything. So it's been more of a personal experience. I, did, I thought about my school's priorities and then I decided on some small and realistic actions that I hoped would impact the school and the children. And my main priority was to focus on, um, in the autumn term, my pri um, learning about diver diversity and establishing my priorities within the school. Um, so I've just recently finished the DEI Leaders Programme and the training from um, yourself, Hannah and Ange has helped me significantly on my journey. It's the training allowed me to network with so many fantastic people and school leaders. And it helped me to, and it allowed me to think critically in all areas of the curriculum, you know, things that I wouldn't have even thought of during my training year or even at university. And I, I guess it also helped me to understand as well that change isn't going to happen overnight and small tangible steps are better than doing nothing at all and I think as an ECT as well as a new teacher sometimes it can become quite overwhelming so allowing yourself to realize that a small step is better than nothing has really helped me and when I talk about networking as well and the course and how it allowed for that to happen, during one of the sessions, I was speaking to a, a fantastic individual called Barr, um, and she was telling me about how her school used um, arts to express identity. And for me, this was a light bulb moment because before I became a teacher, I went to perform an arts college. So the conversation really inspired me to do something similar in my school. So. In October, the October just gone, I attended a course called Black Arts in Education. And then in January this year, we as a school applied for a national programme called The World Reimagined. And it's a programme which uses art as a means to celebrate um, diversity and tackle some really important issues. A really exciting opportunity. I'm doing it alongside the art lead in my school. Um, I think it's exciting not only for um, the children, but also the staff as well. Um, and the training starts in the next couple of weeks. And it ties in quite nicely with the goals that I set myself for the spring term, which was to raise the profile of inclusion work across the school. So my school have a big emphasis on literature and it's something that we're really proud of. So the first action for myself was a book audit in our infant school. I audited the books that we have on offer in the classrooms and in the library. And I really wanted to see where the gaps are, where aren't children seeing themselves reflected in stories. Um, I think I said at the beginning, my school is very diverse and we have children attending that descend from over 15 different cultural backgrounds. So I knew that representation was really important and it needed to matter. So that was, um, I guess, my, my first goal for this or first action for this term and then I also wanted to pass on what I've learned from attending the DI leaders course to colleagues as well so I've just had a CPL session with staff which talks about how we can create a sense of belonging for children and ensure that our classrooms are culturally diverse and thank you to Benny for your book as well because that has been um it's been amazing it's really helped me as well and the CPL session went really well. Staff wanted to take on board all the different ideas and staff wanted to learn. And one thing I've realised this year is that you simply cannot do this work alone. Um, it needs to be embedded and a part of the staff culture and conversations will really allow for that to happen. Whether it is just in a CPL session or a, stat in, a, a chat in the staff room, meaningful conversations are so important. And I definitely think that it's been the key to my um, growth and development within this role this year. So um, I created this timeline so I could see exactly where I wanted to begin and where I wanted to end for this year. So next academic year, I want to make sure, um, I want to continue raising the profile of DEI work across the school, but also start to focus on diversifying the curriculum a little bit more. I know it wouldn't be manageable for me to focus on the whole curriculum at one time. So I'm going to focus in on where I'm most confident in, which is the early years, and then hopefully begin to branch out to different key stages. I know I'm running out of time a little bit. So I just, I thought I'd end by um, just speaking about my advice to ECTs who are looking at leading this work. 
And my first piece of advice would be to network. So talk to people who are different to you, look at Twitter. There are so many amazing opportunities to interact with professionals who can help or give you advice. And then that ties in quite nicely with asking for help. You're not alone in this work. Ask for help from people in school because people are always willing to help. Um, recognize your own biases and from time to time we are going to say things that are incorrect but see them as a, a learning experience it isn't it isn't the end of the road it's a valuable learning experience and I guess the same goes as well for correcting colleagues if you hear or see colleagues saying something that might be incorrect um, then just view them in the, same, in the same way as yourself because at the end of the day we're on this journey together we're all growing and we're all learning and then finally, just think of your goal and remember your purpose. The Golden Circle, I know it's been mentioned a lot today, and um, Simon Sinek has helped me tremendously this year. It can be quite overwhelming. So whenever you feel overwhelmed, think back to your purpose and back to your why. And if at the end of the day, all you feel that you've achieved is happy children who feel valued, then you're doing a great job. And I thought I'd just finish by talking, um, just listing some books that have really helped me this year and also some Twitter handles that I've reached out to or felt inspired by. So thank you so much for listening and I'm open to any questions. Thank you so much, Maz. First of all, can I say the amount of respect I have for you is just like, <laughs> absolutely magnified by this session because I think when I was uh, in my first year of teaching I don't think I would have had the presence of mind to do what you've done now you know this is it's interesting listening because there'll be ECT sitting out there going how did she manage to do this how did she have the time to do this <laughs> in her early career um, years so do you have any practical things to tell us about how you fit this in around everything else um yeah, I guess, I know I've spoken about it, but small steps are better than no steps at all. So think about um, the priority for your school. Like I said earlier, my school's priority is literacy and reading. So I wanted to focus on something that we'd be doing anyway, which is um, how we can build a culture of reading in our, in our school, but also, um, you know, focus on um, in a diverse, diversity lens. Um, so the book audit, something quite small, but has had a big impact for our children. So trying to, I guess, um, see how it can fit in to um, the, your daily teaching life and in a way that isn't going to be overwhelming. And like I said, small steps are better than no steps. And one thing that I value so much is the speaking in different languages every morning. I can tell just by the look at the children, my children's faces that when they can hear a, a child saying hello in a language that they're familiar with, um, they just look so proud. Um, yeah, so, I mean, th that's really good advice, isn't it? It's it's not about doing more and outside of what's happening in your school already, but perhaps actually trying to work in to the daily kind of practice that you're you're already doing that makes Definitely. the difference. And I think the timeline as well, having a timeline, for setting yourself a timeline for the year. For me, I knew that this year was just going to be a personal experience. I knew that I needed to focus on myself and um, doing my own research, reading your book, which has been amazing. Thank you. Um, and maybe starting off like that, starting off by educating yourself and then beginning to branch out. So um, as part of the Diverse Leaders Programme, we had to audit a part of the curriculum. Now, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to audit the whole curriculum. Um, my expertise, I guess, lie in the early years. So um, I guess starting with where you feel most comfortable in and then working your way up. Absolutely. And presuming in, in all of this, your school was really supportive of the idea of a DEI in, in the schools. Were they, were, they, were they encouraging you or did you go to them with this and say, this is what I want to do? Um, no. So they actually reached out to me um, during my teacher training year. I worked with, um, I put together a PowerPoint about the importance of stories and it was before I even started representation in stories sorry and it was before I even started at um, the school I'm at they asked if I would be willing to lead a session um, so they've been they've been really supportive and I think I spoke about as well we need to 
building that culture and one thing that has really helped me is other other colleagues thinking about um how we can make think our school more diverse so for world book day a couple of weeks ago the theme for our school was celebrating diversity in text and that was a fantastic idea from our english lead um looking at different picture books and a, a diff different year groups are focused on different picture books and the day was focused around how we can really celebrate um, the, the range of diverse books that we have on offer now. Um, so my school have been fantastic, they really have. That's really good to hear because we know that there are some schools who will say this isn't a priority, focus on other things. Um, did you meet any resistance from anyone in doing in this work? Not yet, no, <laughs> not yet. I mean, I've only been doing it for a year and a half. Um, I guess it's really only kicked off this year. So not as not, not yet, no, but I'm sure there will be. And, the, and that's the thing. We, you, you never know, but I think it's really positive that you've done this work. It's actually good to see someone has done this work and hasn't met resistance because I think people are, do get worried about, you know, who's going to say what, you know, are, are we focusing on the wrong things, etc. So it's inspiring to hear the work that you've been doing, Maz. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and you. I hope the rest of your weekend goes well. Get some downtime. Thank you for having me. Enjoy You're the rest welcome. of your day.